Next, Alan and I discuss life and times between him and uh, his good friend Chaco Pastorius. And this next cut is the introduction to Three Views of a Secret, featuring the genius of Chaco Pastorius on bass. Wayne being out of, played a lot in Miami, played his famous uh, uh, Jackie Gleason show with going back to Miami. He had a club there and so on and so on. So there was a big Florida connection with Wayne Cochran, C.C. Riders. He was extremely popular there, as well as the Midwest. Uh, word got out that we were looking for a bass player, and this uh, Charlie Brent, uh, baritone player Robert Gable, and myself to this nightclub. We see this little bass player, and he's playing, you know, well, this is different. You know, he's got the, he's got the Jared Jermont and the Duck Dunn and all that stuff, but he's got this other little thing, this little staccato thing going on. And we were like, well, this would be cool. You know, so let's see what, you know, so we invited him down for a rehearsal. And Charlie's 23, I'm 22, Jocko's 21. So we have a rehearsal the next day. And uh, Jocko comes in, he plays, plays the rehearsal down perfect. He says, no, I was here a couple of nights ago and I caught your show. He had total recall. You know, it, it's well documented that the things Jocko became famous for and the first tunes he wrote was on the 10 months he stayed with Wayne, it was on Wayne's band. I have to stop for just a second because while I know that we the show has a fairly big musician following, we also got a lot of great folks over here in North Shore St. Tammany who, you know, they tell me, look, I, you, something came up in the show, I did some research and thank you, I learned about somebody I didn't know right, before. Right. So for those people, we're talking about Jocko Pastorius, probably one of the greatest bass players to ever come because of his unusual spin on how to play the bass and I want right. you to tell me so much more about right. that influenced my life and so many of the other guys who play right. who there was music before him right. and there was music after yeah definitely but you know Jocko had no problem you know admitting that he learned how to write from Charlie Brett Jocko was going man Charlie you think the band would play one of my tunes if I wrote a tune so the next day Jocko comes back with this elaborate, like, six-page orchestrated tune, which is his first tune that he ever wrote called Domingo. He was doing then. He was only on the gig for ten months. Ten months. So anyway, one day we're in a hotel room, and we look over there at the table in the hotel room, and Jocko literally has got a pair of needle-nose pliers, and he's, like, ripping his frets out. And he's got wood flying at me. Charlie recanted the story before, and this is literally the truth. I mean, this is not folklore. I mean, God knows there's enough... You know, stuff. VS stories right. about about Jocko. Yeah, my brother's cousin. You know, no, no. I'm in the room, <laughs> and this is this is from the horse's mouth. I saw this with my own eyes. He's ripping. He's the ripping the frets because he talked about man. I've been wanting to do, and you know, there are no fretless bass. He had this sound in his head. He said, man, I want to create this. You know, and briefly talk about. It. So, and he's pulling the frets out. So, Charlie's right. All of a sudden, he looks at me. He said, man, what the hell are you doing? He said, man, I'm going to make a fretless bass. He said, you can't make a fretless bass. He says, that's the only bass you got. You got a gig in four hours. He's got wood epoxy, you know, and you got that wood filler and sandpaper and, and this uh, epoxy and stuff. He's filling the neck with epoxy he, as he's pulling the frets out. Well, yeah, he pulled the frets out, put in that wood, the wood putty, whatever that is, you know, and, yeah. and, and then the epoxy over it. And Charlie's just like, oh, my God, he says he's trying to explain it. Jocko, look, he said, you know, I mean, playing with frets is one thing. He says, but guys spend their whole life. He says, you can't, you got to be, it's not in between the two frets. You got to be perfect on, on the front. okay? And especially the way you play. He says, you can't, you, you know, you know, you realize, you know, you got to gig in He said, yeah, 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 yeah. So he put it together, showed up the gig that night, and history was made. <laughs> that was it. I swear to God, that's the guys of truth story. Pull it out, pull those frets out, play the gig that night. The Jocko fretless electric bass was born. The rest is history. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if you can see the joy on my face at that story. By the, by, by the knew, fate. Three people who knew that happened and right. were there. Yeah, and I'm and the only one left alive. You're the only one left. Yeah, you know, as thanks, fate would have it, I mean, there's certain. The well, I, uh, you know, like I said, uh, it was a very special moment. I remember. One phone call, he uh, it was right after his solo record was released, 
And at the end of Portrait of Tracy, there's a chord that's played with false harmonics. Well, one a reviewer wrote about it that it was an overdub because those notes are not on the bass. Which at that point, most bass players they're going like, what, you know, is that a keyboard? You know, what what is this? What is this instrument? But anyway, Jocko called me up livid. And he's going, he's ranting and raving, calling this guy all kind of things about Because this guy said that it's impossible to play that chord without it being an overdub. And so the, there he is, he's screaming and, and he's playing, he's got his bass up to the phone and he's playing this chord over and over <laughs> again. And he's going, that's no, you know, so-and-so chord, you know, overdub. I got your, there's your overdub. <laughs> you know, what a great guy. Uh you know, as it's well documented, as years went on, he had some mental issues and had a horrible demise. But, uh, you know, I knew both Jockos. The Jocko was a kid, and, and uh, uh, like I said, I, I like to end everything that anytime I do talk about him, uh, you know, uh, he was a dear friend, and, uh, you know, and I miss him. And uh, the, the world and the music industry is a better place for him. Amen. Yeah, so...